Hi, this is Jessica DeMassa in the Guidewell Insights Lounge at Singularity University's Exponential Medicine 2017. I have with me now Dr. Katherine Moore. She is the Vice President of Strategy for Intuitive Surgical. Nice to have you. Thank you so much. So we were talking a little bit before the interview that Intuitive is most famous for the Da Vinci robot mm -hmm. and all of the gains that that has you know, helped make um, over the last few years. But I understand that you have something new going on. So tell us what's new. Well, there's been an announcement of some first in human data on a new form of robot that we've been developing. Um, it's not in, you know, it's not FDA approved yet. It's all still in those early stages, but uh, it is a catheter-based robot for being able to diagnose lung cancer. So being able to reach into tumors that are out in the periphery mm -hmm. and being able to sample them when they're still very small with a very high accuracy. At least that's the goal. Okay. So we've had our first in human trials and uh, it was safe and very effective. And so we're looking forward to continuing to do that development and get that product out. That's fantastic. And so what's your timeline for something like that? Those are always really hard to answer. I know. You know, because you've got, you've got a success initial first human use but there may be some modifications that you need to make and then there's a regulatory process and all of that just takes the time it no, takes. No, but it's exciting that this is coming down the pike and yeah. has the potential to really re revolutionize care. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit more too, I understand that you're participating in a panel later on um, that talks about the convergence around robotics and I believe it's robotics and AI in particular that you're talking about later. So what else are you seeing kind of coming together in terms of the different technologies that we're seeing really take, take hold? Mm -hmm. 3D printing, AI, what's coming together around robotics? Well, the, the, the convergence that we saw that uh, Larry and I were talking about is um, we met last year at uh, Singularity University at Exponential Medicine, and he was about to get a surgery and with the Da Vinci robot, and we needed to be able to bring onto the vision that the surgeon would have a 3D representation of his internal organs. We needed to be able to fuse uh, the real view of the patient with the view that the surgeon had during surgery. Okay. And so we put together a program that we had the idea for here, and then a couple months later, we had people in his surgery doing this work. That's incredible. And so I, I actually, we spoke to Larry, mm -hmm. and the interview with Larry is available for anybody to take a look at. And so his journey is really um, using not only his own data, but mm -hmm. I mean, he's empowered himself in a way using technology as well, and we're going to be seeing more of that, we hope, down the road. As far as the clinician is concerned mm -hmm. in this regard, what do you see as, I guess, some of the barriers for uptake with some of the convergence of these really disparate technologies? What do they need to know? Are they being prepared in the right way to handle this? I think if the clinician has trouble with the technology, that's probably on the technology developers. Um, shoulders okay uh, you know Fair we, we need to be able to make things that are clearly clinically useful and present them in such a way that they are not like a burden on the surgeon but instead just support clinical decision making make it easier for them to be able to make a decision in real time and so I would say um, I put the onus back on the technologists and, and and say understand the problems that the clinicians are trying to solve and then help them solve them. No, and that's fair. The technology should suit the, suit the, the process and the application more so than having to go the other way around. Exactly. Last question for you. I know, I mean, obviously from your viewpoint, you've got a lot of um, insight into what's going on from a broader perspective in terms of robotics and healthcare. Mm -hmm. So I, I always like to know what some of the trends are. What some, with someone like you who's so engrossed in this and really is almost a subject matter expert, what do you have your eye on for the next couple of years? What are you watching? Well, a, a couple to several years out, I think globally, we're seeing a sea change towards value-based medicine. So not, uh, you know, how do we think about the overall value around the patient and a more patient-centric view where we are thinking about not just what are an individual set of, of procedures that get done on someone, but holistically, how is that patient managed from one point to another? And, and how are the outcomes for that? And that's incredibly exciting because it will change the way we think about the suite of technologies that get used on a patient and, and instead of a whole set of disparate procedures, think about it from the point of view of the patient's outcome. I love that. It's almost like convergence in a different way. In a different way. Yeah. But it's but it's converging at the right point, which mm -hmm. is about patients. 
Exactly. Thank you so much, Catherine, for joining us here. It's always so valuable to get your perspective, and it's exciting to hear about some of the new work that you're doing. Um, so we wish me. you best of luck with that. Thank you for joining us here at the Insights Lounge. Um, I'm Jessica Damasa, and we are here at Singularity University, uh, Exponential Medicine 2017. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.